When did I first start getting into music? Hmm. Let me ponder on that for a second. Uh, ever since I heard it, ever since I could, ever since I found I could get people's attention using it, like I'd be jumping around dancing to it and being silly and everyone would be like, ah, oh, he's so good, he can dance. And um, kind of went from there. So, um, and then ever since I could properly remember buying music, it was like eight or nine, and it was a big Michael Jackson phase. Um, but ever since then, I've got thousands of CDs, thousands of records. Um, so my music has expanded on somewhat of a, a larger scale from classical to hip hop to dance to R&B to, um, to, to everything. I listen to loads of stuff, apart from country and western and the cheeky girls. Um, obviously you've mentioned lots of different types of music there. Um, what makes one song appeal to you more than another song? I think a song that stands out to me is a song that either Either, um, either it's just got something different about it, something refreshing that you haven't hear, heard, or maybe um, another song, some kind of different instruments, or a catchy hook. If you've got a good um, chorus, then that's always kind of something that plays in your head, and you're like, ooh, can't get that out of my head. That's obviously one that means that it's made a bit of an impression. And I kind of like tracks that just bounce along. I'm saying that, I like tracks that are just smooth and mellow. Um, so it's kind of tough to pick one thing that stands out, one particular track. What about... Um Lyrics and things like that. When you listen to music, are lyrics important, or is it more the tune and the melody? Yeah. Um, sometimes lyrics don't really make no difference to me. If there's a really good melody and you're singing la 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 and it sounds amazing, then it sounds good. That's what there is to it at the end of the day. Um, and also the person that sings it, because you kind of your head starts thinking about that kind of style of of how they present the music. So um, things like that. So whoever sings it kind of makes a difference. Um. In sort of for your own music, when you're you're writing songs, what sort of process is it for you? Is it kind of lyrics first, or is it music first, or a bit of everything? And where do you get your sort of inspiration for melodies and for your lyrics? When I'm writing at home, I've got a studio set up that basically I just get upstairs and I get into my studio mode, and I'm like, okay, I've got a few candles burning. I mean, the speakers are set. You can hear the the low frequency bass just ready to run. Um, and I go crazy, and then I, I do like two, three, four, five, depending how I'm feeling different tracks at night or different ideas at least and your inspiration comes from it's just that idea it's just it just kind of hits you just like bang there you go that's what you want to start writing about um, and you kind of just let the music take you from there which of the songs that you uh, had write, writing credits on for going back to through five through to your debut album which songs sort of do you hold especially close to your heart um i really like thinking about five track i really like um Closer to me, which is the last kind of sort of last track we did, um, and that was that's kind of nice just because of the whole moment and the way he was feeling when we were writing it and stuff. And also, um, my less dance was a good one. Um, there's loads of five stuff, and from a personal point of view, um, from a solo career, stuff like "Roll with Me" I really like. Um, emotional, even though it's kind of strange, but lyrically it's quite messy. And then um, "Limbo," for example, because it's just like up, up tempo, unashamed pop. Start tapping your foot. Okay, um, the album, My Track Theory, has received some excellent reviews in the press, but commercially it hasn't sort of hit a bigger success as, say, someone like Coldplay or even uh, sort of Madonna's and the Blues and like that. How does that make you feel? Is, is critical acclaim more important than commercial success, or is it a bit of both? The album hasn't done what maybe a lot of people say in that. The album has done what a lot of people didn't think it would do and saying that the same way it's done a lot it hasn't done as much as some people thought it would do um, and personally from my point of view I'm still proud of it because that's my first venture that's my my sound I'm trying to develop a sound um, and I've been given the opportunity to do that um, and it's still kind of safe to be honest with you this album feels like it's a safe album I'm still trying to find myself so I ain't trying to make no excuses for it or anything because I still love it um, but all I can say is um, you just keep going and something will connect and something will happen and you will find yourself in the sound that personifies you um, and just all I can say is watch out because I don't go down that quick so. Um, in terms of your, your sort of musical style and even your sort of appearance it's changed quite a lot since the five days um, was this kind of a deliberate thing for you to sort of make yourself stand out or was it something that just happened naturally? The whole look was a personal kind of I want to look slightly different um, Obviously, the five days were majority were ruled by big baggy UFOs, and 
I still like to wear a few baggy jeans and stuff now, but um, generally I've just smartened up a notch. I just wanted to take myself to a different kind of. I, I just feel like I've grown up a bit more. Then obviously um, that's my appearance, and people need to see that. So I kind of just thought, yeah, grow your hair a bit, do a few sit ups, and put on some tighter trousers. And you know what I'm saying? But there are days when it gets baggy, so watch out. But there's about, I think in a week it'll be two baggy kind of days, and then the five days will be kind of more smartish. But generally, there's a cap pretty much all the time, so you're not even going to see my hair. Because I can see you saying, take off the cap. I'm really not going to take off the cap. So just get that out of your head. The rest of this interview, I'm wearing the cap. The recent uh, live uh, performances have sort of been very acoustic and been going down the storm sort of on TV and on the live and stuff, uh, road shows and things. What, have you got plans in the future to do more of these acoustic sets? Um, musically, acoustically, I love doing acoustic just because you can just jam and it's freestyle and it's always different. Um, each performance from the next one is going to be slightly different, be it a, a note that the guitarist plays or the way you sing your melody. Um, but all I'm going to say is just hold tight because I've been in the studio recently and not just acoustically but the sound's going all over the place. And um, I can't say that's the style I'm going to go for when I'm doing performances. I'm not going to say, yeah. It's going to be an acoustic one all the time. It might be a live band. It might be something that you're not even expecting. So keep your eyes open and your ears peeled. Do you actually um, play any instruments, in, uh, any instruments yourself? Um, I don't play any instruments, but I do play some instruments. <laughs> 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 um, I do play instruments. So a lot of people don't know that I do. I've got a studio. I've got a keyboard set up. I can play instruments, but only by ear. I can't read music or anything like that. But um, keyboard, guitar. I hold a nice little rhythm on a bass, on a, um, a drum, play bass a bit, um, but it's all by ear. But it's the best way to play because then it comes straight from you. Um, whether it be live or whether it's listening to your album, what would you like your fans and also like the critics to come away thinking after seeing you or listening to your album? I'd like people coming away thinking, um, just maybe knowing me a little bit more. When they hear my music or they see me play somewhere, just thinking, okay, I didn't know you could do that. Cause to be honest with you, it's kind of just breaking away from that whole five thing. When there's five of you to develop yourself individually in a band, kind of, kind of tough sometimes. But um, I've got the opportunity now to do that, so I'm hoping you're gonna like find something in my music or something I do along the way that you think, okay, um, I never knew that about him. Just know me a bit better. Um, in general, the British music industry has been quite dogged basically by the demise of singles and the rise in MP3s and burn it and stuff like that. What's your opinion on the state of the UK market? My opinion on the state of the UK market, um, to be honest with you, there's a lot of good stuff, there's a lot of alright stuff, there's a lot of funky stuff, um, and you don't know what is going to work from one day to the next. One minute it's a, it's a, a TV show thing, and the next minute it's a, a brand new band that's just come out of nowhere, and you think, nah, they won't really do good, or somebody's doing the vocal and something, and you think, nah, that ain't that good, but then it does really, really well, so you can't tell really, you just got to hope that... Um, what you're doing. you just got to basically do what you feel is right um, at the end of the day and then people kind of, they'll take a look at that and if they think that you're real and they like what you're hearing then that's all there is to it. No matter what you do, who you are, if your music's good, I think that comes across. So, um, apart from Scooter, how much is the fish? You know what I'm saying? There's a few, I heard a Scooter track the whole day, man. <laughs> <laughs>